What's going on, everyone? Hope you're doing well. Hope things are going well for you today. Hope it's not too bad. It's a Tuesday. How bad can it be, right? It's not a Monday. The week just started. It's not a Friday. Fridays are, are, are better, but I mean, eh, Tuesday. Hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully everybody's uh, leaving you alone. Hopefully you're staying out of conflict. Um, today we're going to start a new story. No new assignments yet. I feel like we've been pretty heavy with assignments. We had um, the uh, rite of passage for the Apache girl, as it's called. We had red roses just yesterday. I know not many people at all have finished. We only had like 15 minutes in class to work on that. But we are ready to start another short story. This one is considerably longer than red roses. In fact, there are some copies in the back of the room, if you want paper copies, if you want to read ahead, nobody does that, right? And there um, also is a PDF on Google Classroom if you want to read it. But if not, I will take uh, care of the reading. I don't want to say too much about this short story because, you know, it'll all unfold. But the reason we learned a little bit about Lao yesterday is because it has something to do with the story we're going to start today. There are a few um, Laotian, maybe, terms that I'm probably going to mess up. I did look up the pronunciation of, uh, of the main character's name. Sang is how you say it. But let's um, talk about the author for a minute because I think it could be important. I would think so. A little bit about her background. So born in 1951, that's probably not all that important, but she's Chinese American. She was born in Burma. And um, if you notice from the video yesterday, Burma and Lao do border each other. You may have heard of Burma called Myanmar at one time. Now it's called Burma. And uh, she grew up in Thailand, though, not Laos. She grew up in Thailand and then came to the United States to study at Cornell University. Her fiction is set against the backdrop of real events that occurred in Southeast Asia in the 1970s and 1980s. So what we learned yesterday about the United States bombing parts of Laos, but then also taking in Laotian immigrants. That's what that's 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 why we learned a little bit about that, because uh, the background of the main character is going to have something to do with that. Now, our main character is a teenage girl. We don't know exactly where she's living, but we do know this place has winters. So based on what we learned yesterday, where there's a concentration of Laotian immigrants, Laotian families, Laotian American families that live in Minnesota and Wisconsin, who knows? Maybe. Maybe that's the, the setting. Remember with setting, it's uh, where and when. I don't know. When? I don't know. Maybe. Probably not current, present day, but we'll take a look. Let's get into a little bit of reading. Do we need to, let's see, do we need to read the background? Eh, maybe. I kind of uh, talked about it already. But in the short story, The Winter Hibiscus, hibiscus is a flower, by the way. Sang and her family are immigrants from Lao, small tropical country, Southeast Asia, with a population of about 7 million. The video we saw yesterday said 8 million, but you know, what's a million or two when we're talking about the country's population? Lao is bordered by Vietnam, Thailand, Burma, China, and Cambodia. There are about a quarter million Laotians currently living in the United States. And there was a talk of a type or I guess an ethnicity in Lao called the Hmong. Actually starts with an H, but the M is pronounced first. And there are more of the Hmong people living in the U.S. now than actually still live in Lao, the mountains of, of Lao. I right, let's do this. Read. Sang stood in the open doorway and shivered as a gust of wind swept past, 
sending a swirl of red maple leaves rustling against her legs. Early October. Oh, wait a second. It's early October now. And already trees were being stripped bare. A leaf brushed against Sang's sleeve. She snatched at it briefly. I need to put my glasses on because I can see what I'm reading. Snatched at it briefly, admiring the web of dark veins against the fiery red before letting it go again to be carried off by the wind. Okay, lots about leaves right there. Last year, she took so many maple leaves pressed between her thick algebra textbook that her teacher suggested gently that she transfer the leaves to some other books at home. Instead, Sang had simply taken the carefully pressed leaves out and left them in a pile in her room where they moldered, turned smelly, and were eventually tossed out. Sang had felt a vague regret, but no anger. So there will be, I did, I did feel bad because we have had so many assignments in the past recently. So there are no new words this week. There will be 13 new words for the first part of this short story. So we haven't talked about them before like we normally do. We will, but there are a couple words sprinkled throughout this. I thought mm, might be a little difficult for some. Uh, vague is the opposite of specific. Vague, it's like if you just have a vague idea, it's not quite fully formed. So if something is specific, you know exactly what it is. If it's vague, it's just kind of there, but you don't know a lot about it. Number three, paragraph three. For a moment, Sang stood on the doorstep and watched the swirl of autumn leaves in the afternoon sunlight, thinking of the bleak winter ahead. She had lived through enough of them now to dread their grayness and silence, an endless bone-chilling cold. All right. I should have mentioned this before, but at any moment, got something to say. Please stick a hand up there. My daughter just texted me. Oh, she's taking a nap. She stayed home from school today. She was not feeling very good. Um, hopefully, my, my wife was sick the day before. So hopefully, I don't get whatever they whatever she got. They got. At any point, if you have like a, you know, shoot a hand up there. I do have a question, though. I do have a question. An inference. There's an inference on the page. Um, and the, the, the thing I'm trying to get at is, she had lived through enough of them now. So there's kind of a hint. The author is not coming out and telling us. The author is giving us an inference of something. It's not on the page. I'm wondering, what is that something? I will pause. And we can discuss. Hopefully we pause. And just in case anybody is at home and you didn't um, partake in the discussion, like this is not her first time living in the United States. She's been here for a while. Who knows? Maybe she was born here, but we'll find out, you know, her parents aren't, haven't been born here, but she's not new to the country. She's been here for a while. Didn't mean to do that. You don't need to see more of me. Let's do that. More of the book. Short story. All right. She right here, she buttoned up her coat and walked down the worn path through their yard and towards the sidewalk. Bonsai. Her mother called to her, straightening up from neat rows of hot peppers and snow peas that were growing in the vacant lot next door. To take my driver's driving test, Sang replied in English. So even though we don't know Lao, and I probably mispronounced that anyways, we probably know what the mom asked. They do that a lot. Authors do that a lot. Even though they're trying to write in a different language, they give us enough context clues to figure out what was being said. Any ideas? I can make it bigger. Any ideas what the mom said in Lao? I'll pause here. She probably said, probably a lot of your parents ask this question. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm sure that's what she said. I'm going to take my driver's test. <sighs> this unit is rites of passage. We talked about Getting a driver's license being a huge rite of passage. Maybe this is her rite of passage. We'll have to keep reading to figure it out. 
Sang remembered enough Laoshan to understand just about everything that her parents said to her, but she felt more comfortable now speaking in English. In the four years since they had migrated to, the, to America, all right, so now the author just comes out and tells us, okay, so they've been here four years. They had evolved a kind of bilingual dialogue where her parents would continue to address her brothers and her in Laotian, and they would reply in English, with each side sometimes slipping into the other's language to convey certain key words that seemed impossible to translate. Okay, I'm not even, I'm not even going to try right there because I definitely don't want to offend anybody. But you can see what's written there. That's what her mother asks. This is her response. There's no rush, saying conceded. I, I just want to get there in plenty of time. So we can imagine the mom probably said, hey, what's the rush? Why are you going so soon? Something like that. All right, so um, my parents were born in the United States. My parents spoke English. So you can imagine however old your parents are, there's probably this thing we call a generation gap, which means like your parents probably don't know something like TikTok as well as you do. And if they do know TikTok and they try to be a, a TikToker, I think that's what you, it's probably embarrassing to you. Like you don't want to see them dancing. So there's already like some generational gap. Like they just don't maybe understand you as well as your friends understand you because you're all of the same generation. Well, almost every parent and child or whatever, offspring, whatever you want to call, you know, you're not a child anymore, a teenager. They probably have all that, like a similar disconnect. But there's more complications added if the parents were from a different culture, like they grew up in a different culture. They speak a different language. You know, they're more comfortable speaking Lao than English. So you can imagine there's more of a disconnect between Sang and her parents. And we'll see that develop over time. All right, 12 minutes. That is probably enough time. So take a little break, take a little break, clear your brain from everything that's like at academic. We'll take a little break. And then there will be some time in class to work on, whoa, it's right here on the board. There's tons of stuff that you could work on. Let me go over here. Tons of stuff you could work on right there. Red Roses, study guide, it's paper. Have you done it? Red Roses, vocabulary quiz. Have you done it? Red Roses, final assessment. That's the one that was just like assigned yesterday. Most people probably haven't done it. This thing here from a couple of weeks ago, remember like 20 people still hadn't passed it in. I think by the end of, um, by the end of the, uh, the day, more people had, but plenty of work. And of course, if you have work for another class, it's all good. Yeah. All right. But it should be quiet while people are working. All right. Adios, amigos.